tried to sneak out from the bathroom and go home. <laughs> Brad Anderson, I want to, your family, what you've done, and all inductees here that have, have, uh, that have and in the past and now in the ones in the future, uh, for coming to this Don Gardas, this, this house of his. Uh, I'm excited just to be a part of it. And I heard somebody say, just a call from Don. I got the call from Don. It, it, uh, I won't tell him, but I'll tell him now, made me cry. And other people have said it. Brad, I feel so guilty. That chant I wrote you in 78, I'm going to come. <laughs> Our men in HRA, and now I'm 
NHRA guys, that's sucking up for what? <laughs> but, but the reason for these magazines and, and garments is I couldn't, oh, and garments, he went over my injector, because we were, we were a joke, and he touched it, and I remember my brother Louie, Bob Fisher, they both lost two lives because they helped me erase. And, and it was one of them deals where they all said, he touched our car. <laughs> Don Cartlett's touched our car. And they said, shit, this ain't gonna start. <laughs> that's, that's how you live. I'm not gonna get into boring stories out of in Rockingham, uh, we drank a little bit too much and rolled over upside down. But I'll never forget the Bojangles chicken. We never spilled a drop, did we? Did. <laughs> we we showed it to jail. But in the middle of it, chicken was all over the roof. <laughs> and uh, you took a leg and I had a breast. <laughs> That's how we lived. And what was really sad, there was here with, with his Bible praying for these two soul lost souls, is what we were. And one for my wife, Lori, I'd still be lost. And I'll get to that in a minute. So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that somewhere along your life, you're depressed, and you wake up every day, and you've got money in the bank, millions. Okay, Jarvis. I'll throw another 10 on the toolbox. <laughs> I can't believe I said that, Robert. We're going broke and I'm giving away money. What you're doing here with this museum is unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? And he can't hear me, so I, I could have said 100 million. <laughs> but in the middle of this, where was I going, baby? In the middle of this, I have these days where I wake up and I'm depressed, and I, I got cars that are running, I got the young prop kid, I got Brittany, I got Courtney coming out of retirement, her match, and I'm working on it. Okay, that's what makes me. That's what makes me. But I gotta tell you something. Certain things motivate you, you don't know where you came from, you don't know why. I used to stand, I used to spin you in the Orange County Raceway. Wally Parks caught me, Gibbs caught me at the Lawrence line on the fence. Jeez. And you, you got my race cars in there, but I gave my tickets to one of the crew guys. But what I'm saying is, why do you live? Why do we do it? About the past, about the present, about the future? Why am I still doing this at my age? Okay? Why, darlings? Why? Because we love it, right? And we don't know why. I fell in love with NHRA and I haven't figured that shit out yet. Okay? In the middle of it, now I'm going to close up here. You ain't never going to have to hear me again. I'm going to run off. Okay? But I went out with my grandson, my, my granddaughter, uh, Autumn over there, uh, is moving up. She's 17, beautiful, going in to drive hot rods, uh, moving up in the right there. Jacob and Noah. They're going to race. Let me tell you something that happened to me. My son-in-law runs my car, Daniel Hood, and Fabrizi. Hey, Fabrizi, I gave you a heart attack, huh? See, I don't get them, I give them. <laughs> we got that race hot rod back together, didn't they? Yep. They, they, his wife called me and said, hey, you're in the hospital. I think something's wrong with me. I said, well, I don't know about him, but it's, it's Gainesville. <laughs> get him, get him up. So anyway, Danny says, we watch uh, uh, hockey, right? That's right. <laughs> I just have blank spots. But anyway, we watch hockey. And I'm trying to figure out what makes me tick. My wife says, you're miserable to live with. We've got to get on the kitchen on the road. And in the middle of this, by the way, I drive for big Chevrolet. They just gave me a three-year contract. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Sponsors, you got all the Chevrolet bodies ready to run. 
because we've all got different pains out there. But what I was getting to is, Danny said, we got to win this game in the morning. So we went on Sunday, and the, the boys lost. And this was a terrible team, and they lost them. Then, then, we had to play the big team that night. And they said, these guys are number one in, in hockey. And it's going to be tough, Danny said. But I heard the coach with these little kids, 10 years old, 8 years old, and Jacob and Noah's watching his brother, he plays too. And, in, and they drive off watch too. But in the middle of this, they went out on that field and they went nuts on that hockey rink. And I was screaming and yelling. And I walked out of there and my wife says, Oh my God, what happened to you? Because what I saw, what I felt I was losing, what I saw when you're young and the fire in your belly to win, to be a part of it. You know, I see it in Britain, I see it in Harvard, I see it in Prague. So many of these kids, Robert Hyde, Hagen, all of them, Wilkerson, Caps, they want to win. Here I am, a hundred. I just try to stay alive, if you want to know the truth. But in the middle of it, they won. They weren't even going to make the playoffs. And in the middle of it, they took the points away. And it was like a miracle. But I walked out there and my wife said, you have changed in a matter of an hour and a half because I found what I lost. And I lost it. And I couldn't figure it out. That young little person inside you that makes you chase that dream every day. Because that's what it's all about. Shelly watching her children out there. That that's what it's all about. And sometimes we lose it. So when you get old, that shit happens. But get up off that couch. Get off that couch. There's nothing wrong with anybody in this room. If you think you're older and you've got gray hair, I put shoe polish on my hair and make me look cute. <laughs> so, somebody asked me to mention that to me. What did you do to your hair? What I'm saying is I found myself. And there is a God out there. Okay? There is a God out there there with You've been telling me for a long time, I'm starting to listen. But, what if he's an alien? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I listen to God, and that's I know. <laughs> so look, I want to thank everybody, the Jimmy Cox, the Grumnicks, you know, for Breezy, uh, Daniel Hood. When you look at all these kids, uh, Cunningham and, and his partner Barlow and Jimmy Park, all that they do. So I want to say one thing, and I know if you read this, you'll see everyone that got me here, only a few miss it. But I want to say this. To tell you the truth, I forgot what the hell I was going to say. <laughs>
regardless. And <laughs> Thank you. 